Welcome to a new episode of TPG Conversations 5 Questions video series. I'm Kevin New, Group Editor of TPG Asia Media. In this episode, we will look at travel predictions for Asia, not through a crystal ball, but through an intelligent study. Taking us through this topic is Laura Holsworth, Managing Director and Vice President of Asia Pacific with Booking.com. Laura joined Booking.com in June this year, following 10 successful years at SAP Concur, where she last served as the Senior Vice President and General Manager for Asia Pac, Japan and Greater China. Happy to have you on the show, Laura. Thank you very much, Karen. Very happy to be here. I've got five questions for you and here's the first. Now, Booking.com has just completed its latest global travel prediction study. Will you take us through some of the top five predictions and outlook for the Asia travel market and identified by the fundings? Yes, absolutely. Yes, the predictions this year have been really interesting. So I'm happy to share the top five. Number one was really interesting with the vitamin vacay. We're seeing the demand for our travelers want to take a real break. And this is the way that they're seeing the best relaxation. So out of all the options they have, they see for their mindfulness, for their opportunity to really switch off and their mental well-being, that travel will be it. Um, and we saw over 80% want to take that break. Second one we saw was community first, which is really where travelers now really want to have a very positive impact on the local communities that they go to. I'm not sure if that comes from much more domestic travel, so people are used to traveling more in their own backyard, or the fact that they just haven't been able to go out to these different communities. But yeah, this was an also an interesting one. We saw almost six in 10 say that that was super important to them going forward. We've also seen a just say yes approach where travelers really want to go to any opportunity or will take any opportunity they can to take that next trip. You know, I think people have been starved for so long of the opportunities to travel that the just say yes, of course, within budgets where budgets allow um, that we're seeing about three quarters of our respondents said they would just say yes. The fourth one is resetting that out of office or out of home office now. Last year in our predictions, we saw that there was a desire for the workations and you know, working from home, we could now work from anywhere. This year, we're seeing the switch which says, we now need to have a definitive off. Like I'm gonna switch off, I'm putting my out of office on and I'm gonna take a real break. So again, kind of a difference from last year. And then the, the last one is the swipe right on new places and new faces where people are really having this desire to meet and connect and interact with new people and also discover new places. And that kind of reconfirms even for my own side, you know, that I want to try new things when I've traditionally been a bit of a creature of habit. We saw about two thirds of our respondents say that, yeah, they're gonna swipe right on new things. Were any of those findings particularly surprising for you? You know, I don't know that they're super surprising, but I think what is really interesting is that there is this almost conflict now for people. Like I say, the workation option is there, but people want to take a mental break and switch off. They just say, yes, people want to travel, but now it's with an abundance of caution, you know, which they probably didn't have in the past around their health and their safety. Um, and swiping right on new places. I mentioned that that's something that I realized was something I wanted to do. But at the same time, people want to go back to places they're missing, right, that they haven't been able to go to. So I think it's really interesting to see that there's this conflict I think people are facing um, in what they want versus what they'll do. Mm -hmm. We will only know once uh, travel can properly resume and people start to practice what they preach, huh? Exactly. Now, what can travel and tourism suppliers do to respond best to these travel predictions? I think this is really critical because travelers' preferences are evolving. And even as I just said about the contradictions, travelers' preferences are evolving so fast that the industry needs to be nimble. We need to make sure we remain agile, we're listening, we're seeing, and then responding accordingly. So we're seeing you know, an, a rise in the requirement for uh, technology. So people want to have less interactions with people. Again, coming back to the just say yes, but with an abundance of caution. Right? So people are looking for like online check-ins or the ability to um, predict where would be safe to go to. So we're seeing this requirement for increased technology, definitely, um, but also the increased um, requirement for flexibility. And this is really, really critical. We're seeing over 60% of our travelers are saying that they need flexibility because they don't know how things are going to evolve. So transparency, they want choice. Um, they also are changing their criteria. So looking for rigorous criteria now that they wouldn't have had. And I think our suppliers need to be able to, to keep up with that change, that demand, and provide those options and that flexibility. 
It is encouraging to see that the majority of respondents are open to any vacation opportunity, provided budget uh, allows, as you mentioned, right? However, the pandemic has also had a negative impact on many economies, income and job security. Uh, will the travel, return to travel and tourism in the early part of 2022 be marred by cautious spending? Yes, I think it will to some extent. You know, there's been a major impact on people's livelihoods, but then there is this requirement or this desire to still get out and to experience something, something different or something that they're missing. So while we do anticipate that there will be significant changes in the way that people are traveling, um, we saw over 50% say that they're looking now for price or the best deal. So price has always been important. Um, I think now it is probably more critical for some and others who have no, income has not changed and they still have now more income than they had because they've not been able to spend it on travel. So I think, again, we've got this kind of contradiction and confliction there where we've got a lot of impact um, to people's livelihoods, especially in, in communities where tourism is so reliant um, to those that are now feeling like I'm going to splash out and spend. So I think we've got we'll see a bit of both. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, based on Booking.com search and booking performance, which Asian markets will get back to travel the swiftest and which destinations are they eyeing? Yeah, th this one is evolving so fast um, with a recent slew of announcements from different countries opening up different with different restrictions. Um, you know, we, even when we saw Singapore start to open the vaccinated travel lanes, we immediately start to see the searches from our Singapore bookers for London, Paris, Seoul, um, Amsterdam. So again, the places that we would probably expect based on, on the VTL flights. Um, but we're also seeing uh, increased searches for Thailand, um, particularly from Germany and from the UK, for Indonesia, from Australian travellers. So I think it's really going to depend on borders remaining open. We saw even just this week, Cambodia has opened. Um, so we will already start to see booking surges there. Thailand has opened beyond um, the, the Phuket and Koh Samui sandboxes. So I think it's really going to be a bit of a race for the, the countries to start opening, but they need to do so with an abundance of caution too. Right? They will only do so when it's right for their country based on vaccination rates. And I think it's really important that um, we monitor this very closely um, and that wherever we can get vaccinated, we should, and we should take the opportunity to, to make these communities as safe as possible for ourselves and for the local communities. All right, and that's all the questions I have for you, Laura. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Thank you very much, Karen. Past and future episodes of TTG Conversations, five questions can be found on the TTG YouTube channel. Meanwhile, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next episode. Goodbye.